All right, guys. Here is what I wanted to read up on. For those who are still naive and so on and so forth. It's like I posted a video, pizza commercial from Ukraine. And people look at that. Normal people look at that. And they get emotional. They think it's about race and replacement. When it was what it was. Them persons attracted to younger people. Advertising their network business that now moved to El Paso and that they are selling uh, refugees, kids over there to pedals. Anyways, uh, back to the article. And again, let's check if you got that lesson. Because it's not what you think it is, it's never was. Mother's heartbreak. I will love and remember you. This is an article at Daily Mail. Until my last breath. Mother's heartbreak as brave British boy, eight, dies on holiday in Barbados after being held on life support while family begged doctors to let him rest in peace. Ace, eight, suffered a seizure and was diagnosed with leukemia in Barbados. He was tragically declared brain dead with no chance of survival by doctors. His parents wanted to take him off life support to let him rest peacefully, but local laws ban turning off life support if a person has a recordable heartbeat. Little Ace will be remembered for his cheeky personality. Quote, he was so loved. A grieving family who were told they were unable to take their eight-year-old son off life support in Barbados have announced his tragic death after he fell ill with leukemia on holiday. Ace 8 was rushed to hospital and was scheduled to fly back to the UK for emergency medical treatment, but suffered a massive bleed on his brain. He did not regain consciousness. Mother Amber, 30, and Father David had been embroiled in a battle with authorities after hospital bosses intervened to stop her son's life support from being switched off, despite there being no chance of recovery. Announcing the news that he had passed away, Ace's mother said, I will love and remember you until my last breath. A GoFundMe page set up to support his family when Ace fell sick has gathered more than 150,000 pounds. Little Ace was sitting up in his hospital bed, FaceTiming friends and playing card games with his parents until January 8th when his condition had rapidly deteriorated. Ace was no different to any other healthy little boy when he arrived in Barbados for a family trip from Portsmouth last week with his mother. But last Tuesday he began, began feeling ill and was rushed to hospital where a series of scans revealed he was suffering from acute myeloid leukemia before seriously deteriorating after a massive bleed on his brain. His mother said on Saturday, Ace is now resting 5th March 2014, 14th January 2023. There is no footprint too small to leave him imprint in this world. Little Ace was sitting up in his hospital bed for time in France and playing card games with his parents until January 8 when his condition rapidly deteriorated. Within minutes of coming down with a headache, Ace suffered a catastrophic seizure. He has never regained consciousness. His devastated family were battling with the government and Barbados for the right to turn his life support off. Local law stipulates that if there is a heartbeat, the life support machine cannot be turned off. But Ace's family say policymakers were just delaying the inevitable and dragging out the grieving process. 
On Tuesday, Amber shared a photo of her and Ace in Disneyland, writing, My baby boy, you will always be, no matter where you are. You are the biggest part of me, wherever, near or far. In an update posted on her social media on Friday, she said the cruel and evil law was only extending her pain. She said, my poor baby is lying there, brain dead, he doesn't know he is here. In the UK, once you are declared brain dead, your body is declared dead. I can't understand why they are doing this to us. Doctors here in Barbados and the UK agree that it should be turned off as it would be in the UK, but they have been overruled. This is cruel and evil. The only way I can describe it is a living nightmare, she said on Friday night, trying to keep her composure for the sake of Ace's mother. It's hard to speak about it all without crying, it's been such a horrendous time. About 15 of Ace's closest river flew to Barbados when his mother was told there was no chance he would recover. Previously, they had been told it would be weeks until Ace passed away. His heartbeat is still strong because he has a healthy heart and the machine, but all that it means is that it will take longer to pass on his own. His grieving mother Amber thought he had been told her only chance at arguing her son's case was to appear in court. Miss Vern said the earliest they could get a hearing is next Wednesday, but that will no longer be necessary. Doctors have said it would be sensible to get a lawyer. His poor mom can't even start to try to process this awful, awful thing that has happened because now they've gone and done this to her. We can't understand how, if your brain is dead, why they keep him alive for no reason. His body could catch infections. Ace's uncle Joey said Amber has been left devastated by the death of her only child. It's just torture now, his body is covered in bruises. My sister has got to sit through that for another four or five days, seeing her son deteriorate when all she wants is for him to be at peace. We just want to bring him home. The legal loopholes has been described as cruel and evil. When he initially fell ill, his family put it down to the heat. But by Tuesday evening, a blood rash had started spreading throughout his body. He was rushed to the children's ward where tests revealed he had seriously low white cell, red cells and platelets. His family spent days praying for a miracle despite doctors warning them were very early on that it was likely leukemia. They desperately donated platelets, hoping it would boost his chances of improving. But after the seizure, his family learned he was not showing any brain activity at all. Little Ace will be remembered by loved ones for his cheeky personality. He was just the funniest little dude. That's what we call him, little dude. He's so cheeky, has so much attitude, he really just knew his own mind. And he was loved, really, really loved. So, my viewers, what do you think happened here? I'll give you my version of it. I think that little Ace was poisoned. Yeah, little Ace was poisoned. Probably his luggage, when it was reloaded in the airport, was poisoned. His clothes was poisoned with organophosphates. Before he came to Barbados, they already picked him as an organ donor. And yeah, they kept him alive in order to transplant his heart or maybe some other organ like eye or kidney, who knows. 
So that's what I wanted to say. They poison people in the airports. They uh, have this nerve agent made with organophosphate compound. For example, you uh, want to uh, exchange to your local to the local cash once you arrive to the resort, or they poison your clothes. They put poison on the clothing when they open your suitcase. And that's how a child, children have a much faster metabolism uh, and this metamorphosis happening in their organism than adults. So he has this lightning uh, fast leukemia case on his trip and yeah, they decided to support him. Maybe he was also given antibiotics so that um, his heart would be okay with no infections. Yeah, but just like my man, just like my American man, he had his luggage missing at the airport. Then when they didn't manage to kill him right away, they gave it with the food. Then he was diagnosed with uh, large B-cell lymphoma. This is blood cancer. This is what organophosphate poisoning does to you. Uh, this is called hematoxin, the, the one that gives blood. And it's, uh, yeah. Ace was no different to any other healthy little boy when he arrived in Barbados for a family trip from Portsmouth last week with his mother. But last Tuesday he began feeling ill and was rushed to hospital where a series of scans revealed he was suffering from acute myeloid leukemia before seriously deteriorating after a massive bleed on his brain. His mother said on Saturday, Ace is now resting 5th March 2014, 14th January 2023. There is no footprint too small to leave an imprint in this world. Another article at Daily Mail, uh, this one not from January, this one on the 3rd of February. Should brain dead women be kept alive and used as surrogates? Experts floats idea of organ donor style arrangement so women can agree to letting their body be used to give childless couples a chance and having a baby. That means LGBTQ crowd. A Norwegian philosopher said brain dead women could be used as surrogates. The move would help prospective parents who wish to have children but cannot. Should brain-dead women be used as surrogates? That's the outrageously controversial concept floated by one philosopher. The move, which the Norwegian writer herself admit is undoubtedly disturbing, would help prospective parents who wish to have children but cannot, such as gay and infertile couples. Yeah. But Dr. Anna Smejdor, an associate professor in philosophy at the University of Oslo, also claimed it could be a viable option for women who prefer not to carry a child. Women would avoid the pregnancy health risks, such as high blood pressure, along with any emotional trauma as a result of complications, and they tackle the problem of lack of surrogate, she argued. Dr. Smajdor, who describes the concept as whole-body gestational donation, even claimed the brain-dead man could be used as surrogates to ease feminist objections. Paul, should brain-dead women be kept alive and used as surrogates? See, see, Daily Mail is checking how British society is ready for it. Um, because they have been doing this already, just in secret. 
She did not, however, explain how the man would be able to carry a baby, but she said it is not a piece of science fiction and the prospect could appease some feminists. Under her theory, brain-dead women would be used as surrogates if they had consented to do so beforehand. It would involve putting embryos into these women's uterus until birth. Brain death is permanent, meaning the affected person will never regain consciousness or start breathing on their own. They are legally confirmed as dead. It can be caused by a cardiac arrest or heart attack or other injuries which stop the supply of blood or oxygen to the brain. Or by VX nerve agent. A vegetative state, which Formula 1 legend Michael Schumacher is still in, is different. These patients still show some signs of consciousness and have a chance of recovering because the brainstem still functions. Brain-dead people can still have a beating heart and their chest will rise and fall with every breath. However, this is solely down to life support machines, not because the person has miraculously regained the ability to do this themselves. Writing in Theoretical Medicine and bio Bioethics, Dr. Anna Smedjdor said it is surprising that no country allows women to donate their body for surrogacy after brain death, an idea first touted by medics in 2000. Any women wanted to avoid the risks and burdens of being pregnant themselves should have access to this form of surrogacy, she said. Pregnancy and childbirth carry significant health risk and is more deadly than measles, Dr. Smedgedor claimed. However, this is not true in the UK, where people are twice as likely to die from the respiratory infection than in pregnancy. But expectant mothers can face health risk from high blood pressure, which can lead to life-threatening feats called eclampsia and diabetes, which raises the risk of miscarriage and complications during birth. Concerted medical efforts are focused on reading ourselves for measles, while women are expected to submit themselves to the greater risk of pregnancy and childbirth almost without thinking about it. Former international athlete Catarina Sequeira from Portugal gave birth to her son Salvador in 2019, three months after she had been declared brain dead after suffering an acute asthma attack. Salvador's father said at the time that he was in good health. She added, we cannot yet forgo the uterus altogether for the reproduction of our species. I wonder what she meant by their species. But we can transfer the risk of gestation to those who are no longer able to har be harmed by them. Couples opting to use a brain dead surrogate would avoid direct emotional and physical trauma themselves if there were complications with the birth. The donors would be under absolute medical control and surveillance. Surveillance. Don't the reptiles love this word, which would not interfere with their life as it would a living surrogate, as the donor's function is solely to gestate, Dr. Smajidro claimed. And the approach offers a solution to the problems of surrogacy itself. She did not explain what the issues are, but there is a shortage of surrogates and the process can cost up to £80,000 in the UK and double that amount in the US. Kim Kardashian used a surrogate for her, her second two children, yeah, only second, after experiencing complications while pregnant with her eldest two youngsters. While the prospect of using branded women as surrogates may be disconcerning, brain death is already accepted as an inadequate basis for organ donation. People often donate knowing knowing their organs will be given to those waiting for a transplant and in theory this logic is the same she said so whom did it go to i wonder prince george <laughs>